Welcome, welcome, welcome to Prosperous Divas Living Wealthy Future Wealth by Design 2018. This is session number five, the occurring future of prosperity. Now, before we uh, begin the actual webinar, we always like to open it with some music or uh, some spoken word to get us into a prosperous flow. And we have a, a, a selection that I intend we all enjoy to kick it off. One moment. You say you want every girl in the world, that's some wish list idea no one to match it. Just be mindful that every one of four of these girls come with a package that you can't re wrap and give back, kid. I am a poet laureate, yeah, look it up, kid. You can have the hearts of a lion in any lyrical battle, but I am the one that they call Daniel, look it up, kid. I remain calm to the den, I close the mouths of idiots. Lisa and Relentless is synonymous. Decipher my scheme if you dare. I'm fighting to reverse that lyrical curse that she spits in my neighbor's ear. My words are heaven sent. God finds it, the spirit still this and I deliver it. With no intent to come in and number one, my God is three and one. I have no problem being numberless. But is your ignorance infinite? Always bragging about the latest rhyme that you spit. I'm a lady. I don't spit. I'm tsunami. FEMA's still looking for me. And if they ever try to lock me away, I'll just play temporary insanity and tell them that I see dead poets that I try to resurrect in my dreams. I got you thinking that I'm crazy, but you still want me on your team. Because if you're like Kobe up today, then I'm like Mike in the 90s. Go ahead, put up 80 points. Boy, I got six rings. You can have MVP. I'm a dynasty. I'm that bull in my mouth with a seventh ring. You're that bull. They never talk about your simple mind, a little thing. My brain waves are so crazy. I just wear radio frequencies and you still tune in daily. I don't take this here lightly. I go to sleep with a pen in my hand just in case my thoughts try to jump out the bed. Get with it. I'm a huge fan of dreaming because every night when I'm asleep, God writes on the inside of my eyelids. And the devil tried to eBay my soul, but I wouldn't let him get a bid in. I tell him that his music tricks up the kids, but call me a silly rabbit. I got all kind of tricky words up my sleeve. That's why I wear long sleeve. I'm a cutter. I slash wrist the poets who don't rip the pen correctly. I shouldn't have doctor. I get verbal hysterectomies. Come across my path and you know books go down and you won't be able to write nothing for a week. While I stay fertile, I appropriate words like John and Kate. And if I was a dude, my pen will never shoot blank. So I'm timeless. I'm priceless. It's a crisis that they let me get away with this. I'm timeless. I'm priceless. I should be illegal. Damn, they let me get away with this. Snap, snap, toe tap. That was Lisa B. Look it up, kid. The devil tried to put my soul on eBay, but I wouldn't let him get a bid in. All right, tonight's workshop, Unshakable Complaints. Superstitions, the lie, convicted by your own words. The Divine Future Prosperity Blaster, we have a lot of work this session. We're, uh, so roll up your sleeves. It's going to be a lot, a lot of work this evening. And let me turn it over to Steve and Nikki. Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight for session number five of Living Wealthy, Future Wealth by Design, 2018. I am Diva Nikki, and tonight we have a powerful team meeting the course. Divas Nikia, Janice Hollis, okay, look out, Lisa, Lisa Nichols. And our friends, none other than Ronnie B. Living wealthy is for having. Having the prosperous life you desire, the passion you dream of, the spirit of goodwill and love in all your interactions with others. Being free to express yourself, giving yourself fully to all of life. This six session seminar has inquiries and exercises you can apply when immediately in resolving issues and having results that exceed expectations. Now, if you're participating with us for the first time, you are in the perfect place. We promise if you participate fully, 
you will get immediate value that may exceed your expectations. Last session, our inquiries focused on bold, bodacious requests. Integrity and the listening that's already there. I have something to share from our seminar, Family That Comes from Lydia in Savannah, Georgia. So Lydia says, first I want to thank Diva Janice for being courageous and coachable. I saw so much of myself in you. Second, I want to thank you and Ronnie B for saving my marriage with your conversation about the listening that's already there. My husband and I were listening to the webinar when you and Ronnie B started talking about listening and sharing. We were totally engaged. I was telling my husband how Ronnie B was picking on you. <laughs> now he's trying to tell her what to think. Now he's disrespecting her credentials and professionalism. She knows what she is saying, and then blah, 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 blah. I looked at my husband, and he has this huge grin on his face. So I asked, what's so funny? And he says, I'm just listening. Then Ronnie B said to Venice, you are demonstrating the point. It hits me like a ton of bricks. Janice was being my mirror. If I didn't love my husband, I could have hit him. She started laughing. <laughs> it had been a long time since we truly laughed together and cried together. I am a powerful, smart, intelligent woman, and I can turn that into a filter that keeps me from being present to acknowledgement and love. I had stopped listening to my husband and started listening to all my complaints about my husband. Talk about a filter. He can do no right, and he knew it. He is the most supportive man in my life. I'm not going to lose him. I gave him my word that I would listen for our love when we talk. Great seminar. Bless you, Diva. Mm-hmm. All right, all right. Thank you, Lydia. Kudos. Let's see what is present now for the team for themselves from Lydia sharing. Team. Janice, Lana B, team. Nikia. Yes, I'm sorry, Nikia. I'm laughing at you. <laughs> um, <laughs> so... <laughs> So from uh, Lydia sharing, I thought that that was absolutely perfect. Uh, there was absolutely nothing wrong. And for her to really get it as quickly as she did, and for her husband to be a listening of her, to be, okay, so for her husband, husband to just genuinely and authentically listen to her share what occurred. And her get present to the fact that the conversation was her conversation. That was their life. And like she said perfectly, it was a mirror. Janice was her mirror. She was looking at herself in, throughout the whole conversation. And when we do the work and when we're paying attention and when we're in these webinars and seminars, it is so clear to be able to really resonate with what the conversation is. And I share it with Ronnie for myself. I was clear. I, I, become, I began to get even clearer on what his question was that he was asking of her. And even with my share, I'm, I, I got flat with it. I, I was so... Uh, clear with what my response was, that there was no doubt in my mind because I could even see myself in Janice wanting to be uh, clear. I'm stating my position. You know, this is my point. I'm not deviating from it. 
and I get what you're saying, but I need you to hear me out. I get what your your point is, but I want you to hear what my point is and know that I'm right in this matter and there's no proving me wrong. And I'm not necessarily saying that was her position, but it's yet and still relatable. And uh, it, it helped me with my communication and with me being okay with someone else being right, someone else, you know, and even if, if even if that person is not necessarily right or clear, I don't have to sit there and prove a point. I got it. Okay. And everyone's opinion is valued. Everyone's position is valued. And it's not saying that we're saying anything right, and it's not saying that we're saying anything wrong. We are just saying consider the possibility of dot, dot, dot. So thank you. Thank you, Diva Nakia. I like how you broke that down as well for yourself. Ronnie B, anything for you? Since well, you, first I just want to say. And Dennis did help this to come. No, I just, first I just want to say that, uh, uh, Lydia, thank you, thank you. And uh, <laughs> I was sitting there, I think the thing that had that, that kind of moved me when she said that uh, she saw that she was listening to all her complaints about her husband and that he could, there was nothing he could do. You know, whatever mm -hmm. the conversation was going to be, the filter of all my complaints about you was there. How do you want to have a conversation with all of that? Yeah, baby, we're going to have a conversation. And what was right there is all the complaints you have about me. Now, they, now that's not saying that they're not valid complaints. See, she didn't say I had valid complaints or I had invalid complaints. It's just that the filter was there. And whether they were valid or invalid, she wanted to hear her husband. So, uh, you know, uh, thank you for doing the work. And, and of course, thank, thank you, Janice, being one of the uh, uh, new divas to the team and, and diving into the conversation and, uh, and the wisdom that, that you bring. So that's all I got to share. Oh, that's wonderful. I, I think it's very rich, um, the whole concept of what is being offered on the program from an educational perspective so that people are uh, inspired to look a little deeper. And I'll reiterate what I said last week. I put myself uh, in the mirror first because I know what I seek to have in my life. And if it means um, rethinking positions, I do rethink positions. Although my demeanor is very strong, and I will not apologize for that, but the core is I'm teachable because only people... Uh, who are teachable are the ones who continue to grow in life. And kudos to Lydia because she has a marriage. And um, by her putting more value on the relationship than her opinion, mm. I really applaud that. Mm. Yeah. I just want to say about, uh, you know, about your demeanor. Yes, sir. You so right. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay, but, Ronnie. But, but wait, wait. And, and the other part is, I like that demeanor. <laughs> but you know, I do. Listen, uh, forgive me. For, for, forgive me. I, I put it like that to go, God, forgive me. I do not like weak women. Ronnie, I think so. it's a blessing. It's a blessing because <laughs> I have about 60 employees. So um, we got a lot of stuff I, that we have to move. Yeah. 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 yeah, I, yeah I, I, you know, it's I, you did some time. <laughs> okay. But I understand. But we have to come back one by one and deal with people individually. And I, I do understand that. I do. I really do. Uh, hey. All right, future Lisa Nichols. <laughs> <laughs> I see that. But, but back. But back to uh, okay. okay. Back to Diva Nikki because she's running this segment. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. What I what I liked about Lydia sharing is how it was so much of a mirror for her that she was 
right on Janice's team without even trying to be on a team, right? <laughs> and then she, and then she realized, and and and, and was ready to become defensive, right? And then realized that there really was no need to be, and became and became present again mm-hmm. to what she needed to be present to, mm-hmm. you know, and to shift. So I think that was pretty amazing, and that goes mm-hmm. to show how much we can learn from learn about ourselves from other people. By having that outside looking in perspective. Mhm. Mhm. That was great stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so our so our first set of inquiries is a review of unshakable complaints. Those ones you just can't get rid of. Superstitions and the lie being led by Diva Janice. So. Over to you, Janice. Thank you, DV Nikki. And I am I'm very happy to be with you all this evening. Listen, this is really, really, really going to be a journey tonight. Are you or do you have a favorite complaint or complaints that's running the show? You know, those things that just run through our minds like it's not fair, poor me. Why me? All of these things. The nature <laughs> of unshakable complaints. We all have them. Although we don't readily identify with them simply because we're buried behind the complaint. Now tonight, excuse me, we're going to look at the nature of a complaint. What's behind a complaint? what we get from holding on to a complaint. I have a question. Why are some complaints unshakable and others easily resolved? Do complaints have something to do with the occurring world? Often, as we do the work to have our experience of money, relationships, and health grow or move to the next level, we have complaints. We may not identify with it. However, they are there. Sometimes we acknowledge those complaints either verbally or by our actions. Our time through innuendo or lack of action, we acknowledge those complaints. Either way, these complaints can be debilitating and become barriers keeping our highest and best from being manifested. Our complaints, especially in terms of having our desires fulfilled, are not created equally. We're going to examine for a moment and have an inquiry about a specific type of complaint. It's called the unshakable complaint. Now, these are the complaints you may or may not give voice to, but you know in your heart of hearts, they exist and have existed for quite a while. It's those secret friends that are invisible. There are complaints you verbally or not so verbally consistently wish would just disappear. You know those things that are gnawing at you? Here's one of the exercises while we're going through the list of things for you to consider. Please write the following categories. The first one is money, relationships, health. I'll say that again. Money, relationships, health. Now, under each category, write at least one issue you have been putting up with trying to change or fix, or pretending it's okay under each category. Now, if you are clear this is an issue that seems like you can never shake or has gone on far too long, we want you to write it down. If you have given up hope, maybe prayed, and it seems like nothing is happening, we want you to write that down too. Also, if it's something small, 
but irritates the heck out of you, God knows we want you to write that down. <laughs> That's significant. That may have more um uh, than the other stuff that you can readily identify with because uh, it's so small, but you just can't shake it. Listen, feel free to write, to keep writing as we're going to move forward in the inquiry with a couple of questions. Now, the first question I have is, do I have a complaint or does the complaint have me? Is it valid? Is the complaint truly unshakable or is there something hidden or some hidden value from keeping the complaint around? Why am I feeding this thing? Now, let's inquire into the nature of an unshakable complaint. It's a perpetuation. Am I right? Others are wrong. And I noticed, and I would have to say, Ronnie, you have one of my favorite characters here, Jim Parson from The Big Bang Theory. <laughs> and I love Sheldon. He goes, don't you think if I were wrong, I would, I'd know it? And basically, I think that's how we think at times until somebody else points out, well, no, you didn't think of the other aspect of what you were thinking about. But this is just pitch perfect here. And he goes on to say, I can justify my actions and invalidate your actions or the actions of others. I can dominate the conversation and do not have to hear the other side or avoid being dominated and must listen to another's point of view. When we are being right about our complaints, they are unshakable and there is no resolution ever because we're not open. Being right has a complaint, the unshakable. It creates an occurring world of victims, poor me. I could have been somebody. It's not my fault. You are at the effect or mercy of circumstances, aghast. Ultimately, it's a false pretense for avoiding responsibility. And I told Ronnie, I said, the greatest gift I love, Ronnie, is that you give people the gift of responsibility. You make us show up. Avoiding the responsibility for resolving unshakable complaints does not come without a price. Well, the first okay. price uh, is... Uh, Janice, yes. before you go on, uh -huh. before you go on, I just want to just expand something a little bit here. Um, sure. Now, uh, we're looking at, and I do love that. Do you think if I were wrong, I'd know it? <laughs> Don't you think if I were wrong, I'd know it? I love that. But um, uh, the thing about being right, I I'm going to put, there, I'm going to give you two things. Uh, okay. They did an experiment long time ago, you know, 50s, 60s, and that might not be so long time ago for some folks, but it's a long time ago for other people. And uh, in this experiment, what they did was they took they, they they took some rats, they had a box and they set a maze and they put some cheese in one of the you know little corners of the maze. So when they first let the rats go through the maze, uh, they search and search and search and then eventually you know they find the cheese. So the next time they you know go ahead and let the rats go through the maze, the rats go through the maze, search search, find the cheese. Now, around the third or fourth time, the rats just go straight for the cheese. Hey, look, mm -hmm. I ain't searching around. I'm going straight for that cheese. Well, part of the experiment is, is that they move the cheese. Mm -hmm. So rat goes into the maze and goes straight for the cheese and go, hey, whoa, what happened? No cheese. Okay, all right. Okay. So the next day. Rat goes to, you know, to open up the maze. Rat goes through the tunnel, goes straight to where the cheese, no cheese. Now, around the third or fourth time, the rat stops going down the tunnel, looking for, going straight to where it was, and starts looking around in other places. Now, you know what the difference is between a human and a rat? We'll still go oh, down that same tunnel. 
We would yes. still go down there. There was cheese. Yes. I know, darn it, there was cheese down there. It's going to be, we will still go down that tunnel when there is no cheese. Now, the second it. thing, <laughs> now, the second thing <laughs> is, is that um, uh, Janice mentioned when we are being right about our complaints, they are unshakable and there is no resolution. Have you ever had a conversation with someone and they were being so right about their uh, situation that no matter what resolution you offered, no matter how easy it was, they could give you a bigger problem. And it'd be uh, endless. It'd be endless. It'd be endless. An example uh, I like to give old, uh, from a minister from way, way back, uh, back and he said that uh, he had a woman in his congregation who complained and complained and complained about her husband being, being a drunk. Oh, she complained about this man. Compl oh, God, he'd be the death of me. And as time went on, one day he, he stopped drinking. He, he joined the church and actually started participating in the choir. You know, like just totally changed. She mm -hmm. divorced him. She divorced him. Why? Because he became boring to her? <laughs> well, <laughs> I'll just, just say it's sort she of like, She had no more remember, complaints. Right. <laughs> you got it. Okay, let me let you continue on to the next part. <laughs> well, I think I just assume that she, she, she became bored because out of that analogy, her whole life existed around being able to complain. So he took that power well, away. Yeah. Well, that, right. She had something. Uh, and you're going to speak on that, right? <laughs> well, yeah. uh, if we look at it, she was more invested. Because remember, it's a perpetration. It's yeah. a perpetration. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm complaining. I don't want that complaint resolved. Because if it gets resolved. Then I can't yeah. stop. Then I give up the pretense, and I have to take responsibility. So, uh, but, but let me let you move on. No, that's all right. I, I I love the exchange. I really do because it gets into avoidant personality that we all have at times when we don't <laughs> want to take responsibility. <laughs> um, now. The next aspect that we're going to deal with regarding the perpetration is the price is not right. <laughs> <laughs> when we are pretending, and we pretend at times, when we're pretending to be the victim of unshakable complaints, we create an occurring world that impacts our mental, physical, and spiritual experience in our lives. We bring on deterioration and don't know it. The specific areas that pay the price for unshakable complaints are, number one, health and vitality. It is so draining to do something that you complain about or be with people you complain about or you have complaints about. You dread seeing them <laughs> like the plague. <laughs> also, Roddy, love and joy. Yay. I'm jumping up and down for joy while complaining about how you don't listen. Never have. <laughs> never will. Wow. It seems like they only see the problem. Mm. Freedom and power is also impacted by this. Why should I even bother? when you never appreciate what I do anyway, filled with cynicism. Full self-expression. The price of our self-expression is the biggest loss. When you are living the occurring world of an unshakable complaint, you are in essence living, uh-oh, a lie. Hmm. Living a lie, yeah, living a lie is the ultimate killer of your freedom to be. Imagine that. And what is the price you're paying from holding on to unshakable complaints? This is just the question that we can all take a turn at, Ronnie. 
the biggest perpetration from holding on to an unshakable complaint is avoiding responsibility. Now, what actions will you choose to take, ladies, that will resolve the issue? And by when will you take the action? Before we go any further, we'll take a few minutes and just ponder on these things. A moment for sharing, if you will. Steve and Nakia. Wow. Well, okay, man. For <laughs> my <laughs> um, Let's see. Can well, well, well actually, we do have a couple. Actually, we do have a couple of questions, and Diva Nakia is actually perfect. Uh, we got a question from Darren, okay, out of Iowa City, Iowa, and okay. other than it's cold as heck up in Iowa City, Iowa, and Darren asks, is the work and webinars faith based? No. Who would like? They're not. Is it? Huh? I'm sorry. Go. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, oh. I thought you were Ronnie talking. <laughs> um, actually, no. They are not faith based. Um, anyone from any walk of life can do the work. It's simply making a choice. Um, I stand on my faith. So therefore, a lot of what I do or what I say is based on my belief and what actions I take and how I carry myself day to day. Not saying that what someone else's responses are are not based on what their beliefs are, but it's simply are you willing to do the work or not, um, what your past experiences are, what your current situation or circumstance is, what you've been exposed to or have not been exposed to. So everyone doesn't have the same walk. Everyone does not have the same 100% same perspective on things. And that's why the position is we're not saying that something is wrong and we're not saying something is right. It's simply... Are you willing to do the work? Are you willing to take the action? Are you willing to take the quote unquote risk to prove yourself wrong and saying what is impossible or what I can't do or I'm not good enough to do versus proving yourself right? I knew I couldn't do it. It was impossible. I never should have tried it. Well, how would you ever know? if you're not willing to take the necessary action in order to find out what what is there to lose. You're not risking your life. You're not putting yourself in harm's way because you, you would make sound decisions to know what you're doing and if that is something that's jeopardizing your life or someone else's life. And we would never, ever say take an action like that. It's simply what would work for your life and what wouldn't work for your life? What would it take for you to get to where you want to be, where you're destined to be, and what you, and, and to fulfill your purpose in life? Because we all have a purpose. I have a purpose. And my situation and circumstances, sometimes I allow them to get in the way and prevent me from taking the necessary action to get me where I want to be. And I'm, I'm clear with that. I'm realistic with that. And everyone isn't. So no, ultimately, is not a faith-based um, structure, curriculum, or show. It's not. Each person is different. And I just so happen to be the empress of faith because I walk and stand on my faith and I carry my faith with me wherever I go. And I'm, I, I share it. And I scream and yell about it. So that's why. Got it. Well, well uh, 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 thank you, thank you, uh, Diva Nakia, for for making it clear that this is not faith based. <laughs> uh, one thing I do want to put in there is that uh, 
uh, you didn't just happen to be the prince of uh, the empress of faith. That wasn't an accident. Right. You say it was an accident. Actually, to be clear, not. I said it was not an accident. (laughs) Thank you so much, Ronnie. And I just, I always acknowledge Ronnie actually gave me that name. He called me that. So (laughs) that's that's how the Empress of Faith arose. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it didn't just it didn't happen it didn't just happen but that but diva nikki that was our two minutes so i mean diva janice that was our two minute stretch break so keep it rolling <laughs> okay well she was so powerful during the uh <laughs> during the interlude it was just really wonderful to hear her heart regarding um her faith and how we once again, have responsibility to make our own choices so that life can be enriched and fulfilling. Now, I'm not sure what others are struggling with. However, I can say this. If we deliberately show up and take the necessary steps to conquer what we consider unshakable complaints, life will always get better because we get better at living when we are honest first with ourselves. And then of course, we're more transparent with the world and with our creator. We've covered a lot this segment, but we're going to deepen our inquiry into the occurring world created by superstitions. Now, Divi Nikki, I am so excited to turn this one over to you. Is Nikki there? Yes, I think she's working on her technology. We'll just give her a... Uh, <laughs> oh, sure. Oh, okay. I- uh, yeah, it looks like she's having a technology issue. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and pick it up. Superstitions, okay. the prosperity killer. Oh, 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 we got your technology working. Yes, we've got it worked out. Thank you. All right, over to you. (laughs) The prosperity killers reveal. Superstition. Is they, them, people should. When is a superstition not a superstition? Think about that question for a moment. When is a superstition not a superstition? A few of you have been in previous workshops, so don't shut out the answer. Give present to the answer newly. A superstition is not a superstition when you say it's a superstition. Otherwise, it's real. Otherwise, it's real. In this segment, we are having an inquiry into some of the superstitions. We create and keywords that alert you to potential superstitions. Superstitions create an occurring world in our listening. It is all about the conversation, manipulating the context of our experience and we are unaware of its deadly impact. The inquiry? The current world. Superstitions are conversations designed to protect us from forces beyond our control that are subject to harm us by causing us to take or not take certain actions. The superstitions then have us. Superstitions are designed to prevent us from taking risks, being creative, being responsible, or avoiding responsibility, having our full self-expression. Superstitions are manifestations of excuses for not taking action to avoid discomfort or looking bad in the opinion of others. Hmm. Superstitions are a way to hide 
from the real issue and real solutions. Avoid responsibility. In the movie, Angel Heart, a man hides from the devil by hiding himself from himself. If you saw the movie, you know it doesn't work out well. A superstition is simply an unshakable complaint. We are choosing consciously or subconsciously to hide from our view of the situation or circumstances. Ultimately, we have complaints from our view when we do not want to be responsible. We may worry about looking bad or having to deal with negative attitudes and opinions. Or, or, we're just plain scared. <laughs> These are the complaints we don't treat as complaints because we want to keep them around. We are still getting juice out of them. The divas have created a short list of keywords or phrases that will help you identify that sneaky little superstition. Superstition. Is they, them, people, should, would. When we say these words in the context of our opinions about a situation or someone often, it is to put that person or situation in a box. This box limits our understanding of them or the circumstance and allows us to play victim. Most people, people think, people won't, those people. He is that way. She is that way. A good customer is that way. A good prospect is that way. <laughs> if he really loved me, he would always. Sound familiar? Write the following category. Money, relationships, health. Under each category, write the superstitions you have created. Now, next to the superstition, write where do I choose to take responsibility and what new actions will I take? What difference does seeing these hidden complaints or superstitions have on those areas of my life? Next, to each superstition, create a new conversation that would have the superstition disappear and leave me empowered. Please continue the exercise on superstitions and add to your list. We're taking a six-minute break. The time is now 5.44. Please return at 5.59, 5 5.60. 5.50. 5.50. 5.50. Up 5.50. Up next, the lie. And convicted by your own word. Take it away. Time to do it. Today is your day for action. Now is the time to do it. Circumstances will never be ideal, so stop waiting for perfection. Go ahead and make the best of the way things are right now. This moment will be lost forever if you don't use it now. Use it. Get something good done, and the positive difference will remain long after the moment is gone. Life is amazing and much too precious to waste on procrastination. Do yourself a favor and fill your life right now with meaningful effort. There's so very much you can do if you will. Show yourself how much you love and value the opportunity and seize it now. The urge to do nothing may be strong, yet you are stronger. You are strong enough to start the work 
right now.
right, a little Lindsay Webster while we're uh, enjoying the break. And it is time to return. And and it's time for me to turn this segment over to Diva Nikki. Let me just make sure her technology is working. And we are working. We are working. Working. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Over to you. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to talk about the lie. <laughs> we have a little exercise intended to empower you in generating breakthrough results and having your desires fulfilled. So please create the following categories money relationships, and help. Under each category, write three complaints and why each is a stop or a barrier for you in producing results. If there is a person who impacts the complaint, write their name. Now, we're going to give you a couple of minutes to work on your list. We are also working on our list along with you while we share what we see for ourselves so far in the exercise. Oh, okay. We're going to give them a little bit of time to work on that. And mm -hmm. uh, often I get the question, uh, why do we always have the same categories? It is not because we're not creative. <laughs> it is because... No, that's not it. Uh, <laughs> that is not it. Mainly, pretty much the areas that, that, that impact you, living wealthy, are money, relationships, and health. Now, we, did, we, intentionally, uh, we intentionally did not include spirituality because you need to do something on your own. <laughs> yeah. Right? Don't be lazy. <laughs> Yeah, some things you got to work on. You got to work on yourself. But money relationships, and um, you may find that uh, that these categories are impacting that area, and, and vice versa. But uh, the one thing I uh, last week we did the bold bodacious request, and uh, and I did something bold, and I'm just going to give you a, a little background. Okay. Uh, I was raised by my dad, who is my stepfather. Now, for me, he's he's dad. You know, he raised me since I was five years old. Love him. He did, you know, uh, Boy Scouts. Uh, you know, hey. Now, uh, my father, I've seen twice in in fifty some odd years. Like physically, saw saw the person. <laughs> And uh, recently, I had a, a, a aunt on uh, on his side of the family pass away, who was uh, re really kind of kept us uh, in communication, uh, kept me in communication with that side of the family. And so the funeral was Saturday, and uh, you know, and now I've spoken to him, and there's no thing like between us. There, there actually is no thing, and. The bonds aren't aren't as strong as let's say I would desire. You know, hey, no father, I wouldn't be here, and I have enough love where I don't know what the situation was. I don't even care. I I have a great life, and I, nothing was missing. Like oh, I wish I had a father. Or something. So uh, for those people who have families, mixed families, where father, it, it can work out. <laughs> it can't work out. But uh, my bold, bodacious request, I have none, I, I have literally had nothing uh, or very little to do uh, with his side of the family. And uh, not out of any resentment or anything, but just didn't do it. And I made a request. I said, you know, in my, I said, my request for, for them was that uh, in, my, in honor of my aunt that we have a uh, a family reunion where it has nothing to do with somebody dying and create the future of our family 
2020. And and they were like, what? I said, yeah. I said, what I'm requesting is, is that every month until we have the reunion, we have a family call with as many people from the family as possible. And we create this family reunion starting in 2019. And we start this month. And uh, now, you know, I'm someone who's like, I haven't had much to do with the family. And I'm saying, this is what we're going to (laughs) do. This is what I'm requesting. And he and a couple of my other cousins, they were like, man, this this is great. We should do. I said, no, no, I'm not talking about what we should do. Because then that's like something that can be done. I'm talking about doing it in the now. So let's get to scheduling so that we already had that set up. Because then we would be doing instead of something that should be done. done. So that, that was really, really huge. And one of the things I got was that uh, I'm not always present to the difference that I make that my requests make. They're, they're just like, you know, uh, they're, well, anybody can make that request. Well, maybe not. So uh, I really had a, a, just being able to uh, get present to my own power. And it was like no right, no wrong. It was what was possible. So uh, now folks, keep doing the exercise. We're just doing a little bit of sharing to give you some time to work on your list. <laughs> Diva Nikki. My technology is not working. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> okay, so next, create two columns. One lady. Didn't you have a bobo day before? Nah. Give him a little more time. Didn't you have a bobo day since request during the week? No, I did not have a bobo day since request. What oh, I no. had, I'm thank you for that. Right? Don't you go on uh, at what I'm about to say. Hmm. What I had to open up for me about the bold, bold nation's request is ah, I don't know about anybody else, but I think, well, I can speak for myself and a, a few of my friends. I know for sure that we oftentimes make bold, bodacious requests as people of faith of God, our higher power. And in doing so, how dare it, how dare the Creator, Most High, however you relate to Him or her, make a request of us? that be bold, bodacious. Mm. And ask us to step out of our comfort zone. So what opened up to me and that was a lot, a lot of things that I am experiencing in my life right now and over the years have been from bold, bodacious requests that I have made of the most high. And then when I'm inspired by the same spirit to do some things like <clears throat> write a book and instead of me just write, starting and writing and completing it upon request, I hem how about it, I drag my feet, start to make excuses, like all kinds of things. And um, I'm speaking about myself now. And that's opened up to me about about being in bold, bodacious, request that it didn't really have to be about people, per se, or other people, but it could be us and our faith. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I, I just want to say something on that, that... Um... I love what you said, and that is an opening. Uh, you know that 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 is a valuable insight that oftentimes we're called upon for something higher and greater, and we don't fully step into it. 
And that was not the assignment. And what I'd say is, because uh, people do this, this is what you want to assign it was, make a bold, bodacious request of another. Now, there was a reason for that. Okay, because there, there was a, there's a design to it. Many of us can make, we have no problem making bold, bodacious requests of uh, of a higher power, God, uh, you know, uh, right. uh, we have the universe. We have no problem. But making that bold, bodacious request of another, oh, no, I am not going to ask somebody. And that's the stop. What happens is the machinery, the mechanism, the box, the the uh, the matrix will sneakily have you you be looking at A and it had you working on B. So the assignment was another, and the matrix had you look at B, which was yourself. And the assignment was designed to get you out of yourself. <laughs> so just just what that you tried, and that's perfect. That's perfect because this is the whole conversation that we're going into. So uh, uh, keep rolling, uh, so we can move on. But it, it, you're setting it up perfect. Thank you, Diva Nikki. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Pick an item from your list, and under the column labeled line, write your complaint, including any people involved. Ask yourself, how long have you allowed this lie to run the show? When did you first start telling the lie? And why did you do it? Who do you share the lie with? Are they empowering or disempowering the lie? Is the lie costing your productivity in this area? What are your payoffs for keeping the lie in place? The drunk While husband. you're working on that, huh? <laughs> I said a drunk husband. The what? <laughs> what do you say? A drunk husband? <laughs> Earlier story. Go ahead. <laughs> While you're working on that, let me check in with the team. <laughs> the lie. Mm, mind it being you got something to say about the lie? No, no, no. no. I, 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 anything present to anyone or did, uh, just in the conversation so far? The, I would, like Nikia, to share. Oh, I would like Nikia. to share. Oh, okay. go ahead, Nakia. So, yeah, I made the bold, bodacious request of my manager oh. to, to really step up and hold the complete team accountable and to actually step up and step into and Believe me, his. Great, you're breaking up a little bit there. Can you hear me? Great. Okay, sorry. Okay, so I was saying that I actually made a bold, bodacious request in communicating with my manager and requesting that he really step up to the plate and start taking on some of his own duties and responsibilities <laughs> and uh, have the team be accountable for their own duties and responsibilities and stop putting everything on me because mm. I have become overwhelmed and exhausted. And I'm to the point where I'm getting burnt out. And it's not that I don't want to be supportive, but it's I feel like I'm being taken advantage of now because I have the capacity of doing everything that he can do and anyone else can do. So he doesn't need to be present. And 
I was telling myself a lie of believing that I was being valued and valuable and not saying that I'm not oh. being valued in a sense, but saying now I'm no longer being valued because it's being expected and it's being, it's almost like an obligation. And when I requested to take off, he was like, no, you can't do that because then I'm going to be here by myself and I have 99 things to do. And I'm like, well, what the hell does that matter? When and you're here or when you're gone, I have to do it. If I wasn't with the company, you'd have to do it. Mm-hmm. So I need time away. I need time to regroup and take care of me. And then it was like, well, okay. Well, at least can you come in for a couple of hours? And I'm like, really? <laughs> so I said, okay, compromising. I'll come in for a few hours and then I'll leave for the rest of the day. And then it comes where a few minutes later, or an hour later, whatever it was, it was like, well, if you take off Monday, then you need to come in Tuesday because the people are going to be here on Wednesday and I need you here. I'm like, okay. Hmm? Where Where is it that I'm actually being able to take time off and take care of me? You, you missed the whole point because you <laughs> redirected everything back on self, what you need and not what the king. So at the end of the day, I'll become ineffective because my mind is no longer what my purpose is for that that space. So, yeah, the lie, the, 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 I was what I and it was being reinforced that it was a lie. He wanted what he wanted, and me, what was important. Mm. Okay. All right. I think we got kind of got the lie that, that. So part of the lie is is that uh, on one side you're you're totally valuable but on the other side you're not important and that is going to lead into the conversation that we're gonna remember that that you're not important okay i got it (laughs) yeah yeah, i know you've been through this uh diva nikki you need to move us along okay next right under the column label the truth why the issue is a lie. Mm, a little bit of a hint. Avoid responsibility. Who would you need to be and what would you need to own to empower yourself in dealing with the lie? Do you see where the lie is an integrity issue? You can't be whole and complete with a big gaping hole in your power. Now, can you? So now that you acknowledge the lie and the truth, what will you do and by when and act with the latitude? While you're working on the exercise, let me check in again with the team and I'll, I'll go ahead. I was just going to say uh, uh, we, we're going to uh, for bre- we're going to let Janice share <laughs> what's present for her because <laughs> you kind of heard from me and the kids. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I thank you. Uh, what's present for me is uh, the constant reminder to accept that no is a real word. It's a powerful word. It mm. is a healing word because when we learn to say no to external things that folks want to put upon our plate for the day or whatever, we learn to be a little bit healthier. And we all wrestle with this from time to time. Um, It is a constant for me to evaluate when things are being asked of me. Uh, And I do it divinely because I need to know, is this my assignment? And I got to the point where when I start my meditation early in the morning, I ask for those who are assigned to me for this day, because I can only live in the day, 
then let me be open for them. But those who are not assigned to me but have been sent to derail my progress, help me to <laughs> spot them readily and close the door. And I like that's that. My, that's, you know, that's on my truth side. Now, on my lie side, on the lie side, I used to tell myself they really needed me. You know, I can really help <laughs> these people. They need me until I realize, well, wait a minute. They are derailing me. So many people mm. will derail you when they're mm. not assigned to you. So mm. that's my present. Mm, that is awesome. That is awesome. Thank you. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, so now we're going to hear a little spoken word related to our next inquiry, and then back over to Diva Janice for our new inquiry, Convicted by Your Own Word. Take it away. The breakup. Too many wasted years, no more wasted tears, standing here on my own too. They say I gave up. No, I gave you love that you didn't appreciate. You took it for granted like my love was a waste. Sealing your fate because I no longer walk down lonely streets. Hell, it took a while, but truth, you was never truly for me. Finally seeing clearly as your well runs dry. Walking away with no tears in sight, gained in sight. I still pray for you at night. You lost your hold. I've moved on, learning again how to live life, love right. Breaking up is hard to do, but I got it. Retaining knowledge of how to do it right, leaving it all behind. I'm in recovery. Our history soon to be a distant memory, a shattered piece of my past, one not meant to last. It's sad. You'll feel the repercussions like an aftershock. Nope, it wasn't my fault. But I'll take the blame, just to refrain from doing this again. I refuse to be bitter in the end. I am amazing, and you didn't get to damage me. You were lucky to have me, but no more. You feeling dehydrated, and I'm feeling liberated, giving you up even the score. My heart don't hurt anymore. It's no longer sore. The breakup, tough love, like lost and found, like rain coming down to cleanse and restore. You wish I was standing at the door, but you don't get to hear my footsteps in the dark anymore. No more dreaming of you. Yeah, the truth that I've been through because of you, and now I'm through because of you. You don't get to keep me down, and you don't get to keep me around. You missed it. My worth. I still see how you fail to recognize that I am a warrior among these thieves, and I felt you trying to bleed me weak, but you don't understand that I am destined to do great things. I happily stepped on your throne. I used it as a stepping stone, refusing to look back. This part of my past, I happily placed in this big black trash bag, ready for pickup. I'm chunking you deuces, because this, this is a breakup. Breakup, breakup. Snap, snap. Over to you, Diva Janice. Wow, I love it. I love it. Better is the end of the thing than the beginning, because many times <laughs> we're getting to the best part in the end. <clears throat> this segment, yes, this segment, I love that. Breaking the chain, convicted by our own words. Let's review what has been covered so far in the previous session. Number one. The listening that's already there and the occurring world of barriers. Number two, next we'll look at unshakable complaints and superstitions that keep us from producing results with velocity. And third, then we had an inquiry for integrity as workability and the lie. When we no longer acknowledge our unshakable complaints and superstitions, because we are the result of, uh-oh, the lie. But before we had this, had this conversation, we needed to get you grounded in those distinctions. So listen, so strap on your seatbelt because we're blasting off. Now we're going to deal with the breakup. We're going to have an inquiry we call the breakup. Earlier you heard a little poetry from Shani the original Sunshine Princess of Poetry, 
with her awesome performance of The Breakup. Our inquiry into The Breakup is a lot deeper and would take two sessions to complete because it's so powerful. From our inquiries into the occurring world, we made this distinction, which is the context or framework for our conversations and training. Now, the occurring world is distinct from the real or physical world. The occurring world is composed of the conversations you have for and about the real world or physical world. The conversations you have for and about the real or physical world, whether you know it or not, shapes your experience of life. Your experience of life is your life. Thus, the conversations you have for and about the real or physical world is the fabric of your life. Now, the listening that's already there, unshakable complaints, superstitions, and the lie color our conversations for the world in ways that create barriers. Also, they cause integrity issues and can, and sometimes do, produce unnecessary struggle and and failure. Given that we are divine beings, we have divine power. So why do we have those things more correctly? And why do we have those things have, or do those things have us? Now, I'm going to make you think on this one. I want you to try something on. You create them as a fulfillment of your word, and you were not aware you were creating them from the words you used. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. As beings, we are born into the physical or real world. We are whole, complete, filled with love and joy. In time, there are barriers that we create to the experience of being whole, complete, Feels with love and joy. And why do we do that is the question. What is the immediately, what is immediately present for you hearing that statement? And we're going to take a moment and deal with some, share with the team some very short words that have been put together regarding this segment. Ronnie, for me. Uh-huh, go right ahead. Well, well, well uh, we're just going to just briefly uh, amongst us just share what's present just uh, just real briefly. I'm going to say what's what's present for me is that uh, when you ask the question, why do we do that? And what immediately is present for me is is that oh, I have something to do with it. <laughs> like it's no accident. So that's what I'm present to briefly. Anyone else? I say of what responsibility. Mm-hmm. And that kind of goes in line with Ronnie's session. I have something to do with it. Okay. Okay. I'm here. Sorry. Um, protect me to protect Oh, you started breaking up again, my dear. I'm so sorry. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hello? Okay. Yes. Sorry. Um, I was saying protection, the need to protect oneself from the mm. unknown, mm. from insecurities. Mm. That's very powerful. And many times because we have avoided personalities, uh, traits, mm. we rob ourselves of experiencing breakthroughs in life, first spiritually psychologically, emotionally, and then physically and whatever would manifest into the world because, as we all know, there is no way 
to bring more into our lives, except we are willing to rid ourselves of the toxicity that builds up. Um, and sometimes it's so deeply layered and we're shrouded in residue because of breakups, because of barriers that we erect uh, from past experiences, and also because of what we say. We speak those negative things into existence, and therefore they manifest. And many times we don't take the responsibility to reverse the seeds that we have now unleashed into the universe because we attract what we contemplate the most. And what you feed the most becomes your master in any situation, in any relationship, be it business, in your religious setting, social setting, in education, in academia, whatever you feed the most becomes master. So it's imperative that we understand when there are divisions. Number one, we show up first to look ourselves in the mirror to make sure we didn't cause the infraction. And if we did, to take responsibility for it, to bring correction. Because if we don't, Ronnie, we then, then begin to build upon a false foundation that eventually will erode. That's part of my presence in, from this segment as well. But I will go on. For many, what is present is a variation of something happened or what happened. When that incident happened, a barrier was created. Makes sense when you're coming from a physical world. Let's try this. <clears throat> Excuse me. There were times when something happened. It may have been dramatic, bad, embarrassing, or something terrible, yet no barrier was created. Regardless of what happened, you still experience being whole, complete, filled with love and joy. Then there was something that happened, an incident, and once it happened, forevermore as a divine being, your experience of life influenced barriers to the presence of being whole, complete, and filled with love and joy. The divas distinguish that as the breakup. Before we go any deeper into the inquiry of the breakup, I'm going to have a little conversation to create the framework. It goes something like this. Someone would say, the divine said, let there be light, which was a command to the universe. And the universe reacted, and there was light. Being creations, are children of a divine being, we possess the powers bestowed upon divine beings. So when we are connected to our divine power and own that power and are responsible for that power, when we say chair, a chair will manifest in the spiritual and physical world. When we say mountain, move from here to there, Mountains spiritually and physically and mentally move on our command. Our casual remarks, good or bad or indifferent, are filled with divine power. The universe makes absolutely no distinction because these are universal principles. It always follows our command. So let me say that again. Our casual remarks be it good, bad, or indifferent, are filled with divine power. The universe makes no distinction. It only follows our command. Our experience of life, our power to create and manifest results in the spiritual, physical, mental world are ultimately a function of our words. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, I lost my place, Ronnie. <laughs> okay. I, I was commu- sneezing. I, I sneezed. I lost my place. Oh, All God. Right, I'm, I'm back okay. on point. I'm back on oh, point. Okay. I'm so sorry. Our communication with the universe, ourselves and others, is the delivery mechanism to live and experience lives of love, power, freedom, and full self-expression. 
The world does not give you who you are being. You create the world you experience as a manifestation of who you are being and the conversations you create. There is no world out there. There is a physical world. That physical world does not determine your experience or reactions. You are powerful beyond measure. Let me say that again. You are powerful beyond measure. Now, that I have given you a little more context, I'm going to turn the rest of the inquiry over to Ronnie B as we distinguish the breakup. Ronnie? Thank you. Thank you. The breakup, the shattering of being. When we were born and as children, we experienced life from the context of being whole, complete, filled with love and joy. There was no separation between us, others, the world. We were truly one with it all. Now, between the ages of seven and nine, something happened that forever changed that dynamic. Now, as children, we have no clue the powers we possess, and the universe makes no distinction between adult and children. It simply follows our commands. Many of us have, you know, have seen the old episode of The Twilight Zone, where there's a young boy who has you know, unlimited power, and he's terrorizing his family and the community. And everyone's like, like scared that they can't, because if he gets upset, whatever he thinks, he has unlimited power. He can make you disappear. You're gone. Or turn, do bad things to you. The universe makes no distinction between adult and children. It just simply follows our commands. Now, as adults, we catch ourselves and take commands back before the universe fulfills the command. So we'll revoke something. We'll say, well, no, no, cancel that. I don't want, I didn't mean that. We'll clarify. And the universe takes it. But as children, we're innocent and we're just unaware. We have no ideas that we just do stuff. Now, between the ages of seven and nine, we had the breakup. When the breakup happened, we were no longer one with others, the world, the universe, and ourselves. We became separate. And our experience was a world out there, and we needed to make it, to try to fit back into a world we had broken off from. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again. When that happened, now, it may not have been a particularly tragic or dramatic event, We issued an extremely powerful command to the universe that has shaped our experience of life. We convicted ourselves by our very own words. In a moment, we told the universe who we are and the universe immediately fulfilled our command. Now, being children, we said it innocently. Thus, we did not reverse it before it was fulfilled. So for the first part of the breakup, Something happened, and you were the judge and jury, and you convicted yourself. You said something to the effect of, I am blank, or I must be blank. Keep inquiring and see if you can determine your conviction. Now, don't worry if you can't find it right now. Just keep looking for for uh, for some, some, it may pop up tomorrow or next session, but you just want to keep looking, okay? Now, so everyone take a few minutes while I share what happened and what I convicted or sentenced myself. Now, again, you want to look in your life around the time you were seven or nine and see if you can see when you had that breakup and became separate. Don't worry if you can't find the exact time or exactly what happened. Just start the inquiry. Now, as you look for your conviction, remember the wording is from a child speaking. I am bad. I must be stupid. I don't matter. I'm scary. Note, I'm not scared. I am scary. I'm not important. I must be nothing. 
I'm funny. I'm smart. Now, a brief share. There's a. Uh, I have a friend who, uh, what happened for him? He was embarrassed at school. Uh, there was something that was going on in the class, and he slipped, fell, did something. He was embarrassed. He got up, and everybody was laughing. Well, he said to himself, I must be funny. And from then on, guess what? Funny. So through, he went through uh, years where he would be had issues in relationships where let's just say his, his mate would say, well, you think this situation is funny. See, funny can work, but when it's automatic, when it's the machinery, when it's the matrix, then you don't even know is this happening. Now, for me, the, uh, uh, the breakup happened. I was around eight or nine years old and I was walking to the YMCA. Now, I grew up in Chicago. And uh, I used to love to go to the YMCA because they had all the nice games and stuff. Kids could play swimming. It was just a great place. And I'm walking down the street to the YMCA and there was this uh, bigger, older kid who was walking past. And as we were walking past, I looked over at him and he spit in my mouth. He spit in my mouth. And at that moment, you know, I'm like, wow. Because before then, it was like, you know, like I said, it was like people were, you know, there was a connection. I was never present to not being a part of everything and everything part of me. And uh, just that, you know, and, and not even thinking, though, just, just I'm, you know, we're all here, you know. And when he did that, bam. And I said, I must be nothing. And those were my child's words. To deal with that, I must be nothing. Because to spit in somebody's mouth, you know, you must be nothing. Now, the thing about your, uh, uh, about that conviction, you are either proving it or disproving your conviction. And for me, that shows up a lot of ways. Uh, uh, so it's sort of like the the as they say the the one side of the hand and then the other side. So one side of the hand, I'm always in some subtle way proving I'm nothing. Ah, what I did that was nothing. Everybody does that, you know, because it shows up in conversation, but also it shows up in structure. So uh, uh, I remember someone telling me saying, asking me if I iron my t-shirts. I was like, I iron my, no, I don't iron my t-shirts. I do fold them and stuff like that. But what they would do, what Sam was that, what I got was, was that uh, I was standing out, even with t-shirts. I'm like, it's just a t-shirt. But somehow, uh, you know, I'm being seen. And if you're being seen, if you can be seen, then you're not nothing. Because you know nothing, you can't be seen. And uh, uh, so... Uh, that just kind of like uh, you either proving it or you either proving it or disproving it. Now, if you look in your world of conversations and for many, your physical structures, you may start to see the manifestation of your conviction or something to disprove your conviction, which in and of itself is a manifestation of your conviction. Yes, it is vicious and cynical. Now, I have a bit of bad news. <laughs> now, some of you are going, how much more bad news you'd have gave me this darn conviction? Now, I have a bit of bad news. Your conviction can never be repealed. There's no parole. There are no pardons, and you did it. Now, there's a second part to the breakup. The second part is the question that will not be answered. Now, before I go into that, I do want to... Uh, just uh, briefly touch on something earlier. Uh, uh, I was speaking with Diva Nikki and we were uh, speaking about her bodacious request. And uh, I'm just going to say that it's really perfect because her conviction kept her from following the instructions. And uh, now she's done this exercise. So, you know, I I'm just going to fast forward a little bit. Uh, for 
diva Nikki, her conviction is she is scary. Now, note I did not say she is scared. She's scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it hit, didn't it? She's scary. And so she's either proven that she's scary or disproven that she's scary. So some of the things she does to disprove it is she's really nice and really sweet. And like Janice, really powerful. And when, when she's being that way, people can have that occur as scary. You know, when you have a woman being powerful and you're really listening, you're not like, oh, what well, she's being me or that, uh, they come off, it gets scary. Women will make you move. You know, many of you have mothers. Don't She will make you move. Make your big daddy move too. So, uh, you know. Uh, it can be scary. So uh, uh, I'm just going to assert uh, that what kept Diva Nikki from following the instruction was scary. Because she would scare folks making bodacious requests. Because the request that the divine uh, are putting <laughs> upon her re- actually require her to make a bodacious request of other people. See how sneaky that little conviction is? It's cynical. It's, and there's no parole. There are no pardons, and you did it. Now, there's a second part to the – oh, by the way, since I got Diva Nakia, <laughs> might as well. Like I said, she did, we're fasting forward. Uh, Janice has not done this work, so we're kind of letting her just be with it. But uh, uh, Diva Nakia uh, – is let's see uh, uh was yours yours was around let's see not that i'm nothing oh you're not important that's right yeah see diva yeah diva nikki nakia uh and and her time frame was that her, her i think it was her grandmother passed away and they wouldn't tell her they wouldn't tell her that and she loved this woman would not tell her and when they did tell her she what she said was, I'm not important. You know, I must not be important. You wouldn't tell me the person I love, you know, with all this love had passed away. I'm just not important. So, of course, when she goes to work to make a bold, bodacious request, what's in there, what's in there is, I'm not important. So, of course, her boss would say, well, hey, you know, you're not important. Hmm. He didn't actually say those words, but he might as well have. No, I'm important. You're not important. I need you to do X, Y, Z because I'm important. You're not. Your interests are not important. That is what shows up in the world when your conviction is I'm not important. Now, there's a second part to the breakup. And the second part is the question that will not be answered. So, boom. Darn, you hit yourself with the conviction, and then you, now you got this darn question. And the question that cannot be answered. At the same time you convicted yourself, you also created a question that will never be answered in your experience. And it has many variations. Now, my conviction is I must be nothing. And the question that arose was, what should I do? Now, this question will always show up in some form or another repeatedly, and there will never be an absolute answer. It is unanswerable in my experience. Well, what should I do? What should I do now? What should I do later? What if this happens? What should I do? Now, for me, that question goes on over and over again until I catch myself. Then it sneaks right right back in with another form. What should I have done? You know? <laughs> It is what it it, it, it always linger. Now, um, wow. Now the team and I are going, going to share. The, let's see. Let's just see if the, what the divas are present to around their conviction or the question that can never be answered. And um, okay, God, a diva Nikki, uh, uh, what's present for you around the conversation <laughs> with your scary self? With my scary self. <laughs> you know, I struggle with this before. Um, 
And I'm still, honestly, I'm still struggling with it. Yeah, I really am. I'm still struggling. I mean, how do, how do you not be scary and intimidate? You, know, <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? How can do you I not, how can do you I not show up? Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah do I, I know you want to fix up? it. You want to <laughs> fix it. You want to do something with it. Just like, look, can I get rid of it? Nah, it cannot be revealed. There's no paroles and there are no pardons. Now, no, I'm gonna just 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 want to put. It. I did not say that there was no hope. <laughs> I just said it wouldn't go away. But th- I did not say that there wasn't, you know. But <laughs> but yeah, the, yeah, because it was over your, uh, uh, cause you had that cute little gap tooth. But some people made uh, the, their remarks. So that's, you know, I remember the incident. He shared it quite well. But there's, uh, and, and, you know, that's perfect because most people get there where they're like, well, wow, man, if there's, you know, you can't do anything with it. Well, uh, uh, I'm just going to say that, uh, you know, I, uh, it's not that you can't do some things. I put it like this. You want to recognize it. Notice I said, I catch myself. Now, I catch myself. Oh, oh, wait just a minute. I'm doing that thing. But uh, now uh, uh, it's amazing because uh, I, a past life, I worked as a systems analyst. So uh, the thing that, of course, you want to avoid is analysis paralysis, and which is perfect yeah. for a question called, what should I, you know, I, what should I do? So I went and found a job where I'm always asking that question. That's what analysts do. What should I do? They ask, what mm-hmm. should I do? What should we do now? Well, all, what should, that, that's, of course I would get that kind of job. Your conviction will have you do that. <laughs> okay. All right. uh, uh, Diva Janice, anything present for you? Regarding conviction? Uh, well, regarding anything present from the conversation, just anything present. Oh, absolutely. Uh, first, first uh, I once again, I find it very enriching uh, how transparent everyone is in their conversations and, and sharing among uh, the group, which also being um, ingested by the audience just to bring enlightenment in a very simplistic manner. That's really what's present for me. Mm. I'm being analytical, but this is what I hear. Uh, and mm. ladies are sharing, which is really in, it's imperative that we have these connectors because we are part of the connection of, of, of the collective. So I just, um, I find it very enriching. It, it really is really, really is, and each person brings a tremendous amount of strength and um, their own faith to their walk to be true to themselves, which is wonderful. So that's what I'm present to. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. And I guess what? There is no exercise, and there is an assignment for the next week. Inquire into your conviction and the question that can never be answered. See if you can find where it impacts your actions. The conviction and the question that can never be answered are never going to go away. They are the source of the listening that's already there, unshakable complaints, superstitions, and the lie. Now, any time that you can get to the source of something, then you have power over it and with it. Okay. now, if anyone is feeling like what is the point of distinguishing your conviction and the question that can never be answered if you can't make it disappear, that feeling or question is your conviction and the question that can never be answered working to stay concealed. That's right. It does. It does. What have you ever heard the expression? The devil is in the details. Guess what? Mm -hmm. Guess what? That's the devil that's in the details, the conviction and the question. And we did not say that you don't have power over and with it. 
but we're just not going to give that to you this week. <laughs> Keep working on this exercise during the week. If you have any questions or need coaching, email us, divas at prosperousdivas.com. We are going to take a five-minute break. The time is 645. We'll be back. We'll be supercharged, moving with velocity at 650. The break begins now. I behold the wonder of God. Watching children discover the wonders of life reminds me that God is the source of life at the center of everyone. Holding this truth in mind, I know that each and every creation is precious to God. Because I know that all of nature is to be treasured, I help preserve the environment that supports the abundance of life. I honor God by honoring all creation because of our shared sacred heritage. Nothing can come between individuals or nations except our resistance to accepting who we are as God's creator. As I view the abundance and diversity of life with wonder, I take in the awesomeness of God that continues to unfold. I am eager to live from an awareness of the sacred presence that sustains all life. Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. Matthew 18, 5.
Welcome back from the break. And we'll be turning this over to Diva Nikki and Diva Nikia. But uh, one kind, Diva Nikki, I know you're going to ask us some questions for time. You could only ask us one of the questions. Over to you. Well, we had a Diva Nikki. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. One question. Right. Welcome back. <laughs> before we before we receive the divine and future prosperity blaster from the Empress of Faith, Diva Nakia, I have a few questions, but I'm only going to ask one <laughs> for the team and myself. <laughs> and that is, what new insight did you see about yourself and how you relate with others that is empowering? That's the question. Mm, what new insight did you see about yourself and how you relate with others that is empowering? Well, really quickly for myself, what I saw um, when you asked about, well, when you said that I avoided doing the assignment, and I searched in my head, you know, while we've been here, okay, well, what can I ask of somebody? Because essentially, I feel like like I have, like where I'm at right now, I don't need anything from anybody. And then I found something that I could ask of my team, different team members um, in my trade hmm. group. So that was, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> All right. Yeah, to see, see, you got, you afflicted with that today's powerful women thing. Y'all don't need nobody. Do it all myself. Y'all can, you know, get, y'all uh, can carry uh, carry lumber uh, on your back, get all the uh, groceries, no. and, and oh, you no, you close your own door. All. You can open and close your own door. I got it. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. That is not me at all. I am the woman that lets a man be a man in my presence at all times. I will stand by the door and wait for you to open the door. I will not get out the car until you open my, until you come around and open the door. I'm that chick. I'm not that other one. But I was just saying where I'm at right now, I didn't think I needed anything, but then I, I thought I forgot to ask of my team. Mm-hmm. And that was empowering me. Next. Wow. Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Please quit. Next. <laughs> that was great. That was great. That was great. And, uh, uh, you know, because really somebody is sitting there now. They're going, well, I don't need anything of anybody. But they're, they're, they are overworked or they're not taking a big enough risk for what they're mm-hmm. up to. Because bold, bodacious request is all about taking a risk. You know, it may be bold for you to say, hey, team member, you know what? Can you handle this aspect? And, uh, you know, it was really great. It's like, uh, you know, I was thinking, here's Janice. She has like 60 employees. Now, there, there are commands. You need to do this and you need to do it now. And then there are requests where she's like, look, you know, what? I can't command you to do that. So she has to request. So I say that she has mm-hmm. like some facility with making bold, bodacious requests. Because I'm sure she's got employees and, and clientele that we, they're like, oh, no, 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 no. I said, well, you know, got to have you do this. You know, and I agree with that, one person, yeah, one person's bold, bodacious request to the person, it may not occur as bold and bodacious. Oh, you know, no problem. Right. But to the person making the request, it took something that they had to own. Okay. You get to ask the question of the next person. (laughs) Yes, next. What new insight? I'm sorry, who is this relating to? I mean, who is this question to at this juncture? Or is it open? But it might as well be open. You started speaking. (laughs) Okay. All right. Sounds good. All right. I'll take it. Um, The new insight I gathered uh, that I find to be relatable and something that can be integrated into my daily practices is um, being open consistently to garner from 
the strengths of others and being analytical to assess what others may view as weaknesses. And for me, it's empowering to make a comparison. Okay, why didn't I do it? Uh, did I allow external voices to derail my start? Mm. Uh, but yet I'm still responsible to complete what mm. I start. So mm. this is relatable for me mm. because we are responsible from start to completion with our clients. And I have to be equally as um, disciplined in my own personal life, what I start, what my regimens are. It's important to me. It's important to me that I, when I know the creator is waking me up at 4.30 in the morning, that I, I yeah. stand to attention to honor that because he's mm -hmm. producing something in me as a discipline. So I, for me, to have an end goal where I always complete what I start. That's mm. empowering to me and what I gather from this conversation because everybody went back to something that they were challenged to do. Mm. Wow. That was powerful. Mm -hmm. it sure was. He's producing something, Ronnie. He's producing something. So I'm, I'm open to the production because I, I don't want to repeat this one. I don't want to repeat this cycle. So I'm, <laughs> I'm determined to pass <laughs> the test. And I, I'm studying very hard. So I, I'm I with you. I might, I, might have to, I might have to sign up. You know. <laughs> okay. I'm making the dean's list this semester, dude. I'm, I'm on the dean's list. I'm not repeating I, this. I hear you there. <laughs> wow. Well, okay. That was very insightful. Um, for myself, there were two things that resonated with me, um, Ronnie. One thing that you said, regard, as you related it to your employment and um, having to analyze and going into an industry to where you have to ask a question, you know, well, what, what's next? What's next? And I can see in my career path how me being an analytical person, but at the same time having to or desiring to be this perfectionist and mm. good enough and I can do it, um, being worthy. Mm. I end up in these industries to where, at the end of the day, they can always rely on me 100% without a doubt and not have to be concerned with anything else. And they can dump and dump and dump and dump and dump, and, dump and the kid will take it. Mm. And so well, I create important. that condition. Right. <laughs> I, create, I, I create that environment and that, in, that condition for myself because – it was something that someone said, and it was a clear no. Oh, it was something I had read earlier. Mm. And it was a clear no where, you know, just quickly someone, and, and, and I could relate to it, someone always wants me to support them in doing X, Y, Z, and I'm like there for them. And then I need someone to support me in my endeavors in X, Y, Z. I go to that same person that I've always supported. And that person says, no, because it's not just you by yourself. Whatever the excuse, the reason was, the bottom line was no. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, okay. So I have to become related to the word no differently in a context that it's okay to say no, and it's okay to take a stand for what's, important for me to take care of me and being bold, bold, bold and bodacious. And so tomorrow I will be making a new request of my manager. <laughs> <laughs> so that was yeah, the other thing yeah, that I got. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. The thing is, is that especially when, when, when you have that kind of conviction uh, that you're not important, uh, it has so many sneaky little variations mm -hmm. to keep things locked in place. Yes. And, uh, and it ends up building the complaints, yes. the unshakable ones that are, they all start tying, tying together. Now there is 
Okay, because uh, might as well give give people some hope. There is hope. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and, and there is a way. There are ways that uh, that your your sent your conviction and unanswerable question get handled. And and just to give you a clue, because we have to, uh, it'll be part of the, the it'll be part of the finale. Because in in actually in, in the finale, guess what? We're actually going to give you the, the the design work to actually because now you can hear what's there to mm-hmm. build uh, to build a future that's designed standing in the future. So uh, we had to do all of this so that you could be in that conversation. And uh, but uh, part of it is is that uh, true power. True power is when your environment listens to you as the possibilities that you create for yourself and others. <laughs> so you disappear. There is no conviction. There is no unanswerable question. There are no unshakable complaints. There are no superstitions. There is no lie because your environment listens to you as the possibilities you create for yourself and others. And that's all it hears. That's all it's your environment. That is when you have true power. Your environment. On, when I hear Janice, I hear her speak. I do not hear the being, the physical person Janice. I hear, I hear the possibility that Janice creates. And speaks into the universe. So for me, there, you know, I, and that structure that she's created is big enough where that's what pulls you forward. So kind of giving you a little heads up on it. Stephen, Nikki, oh, thank back you. to you. But that was Diva Nikki back to you, but <laughs> we'll go ahead. I'm going to thank everyone for sharing. Even the kick from the kid, over to you. Well, all right, all right, all right. Awesome segments. I'm enjoying it all and loving it even more. So, I am Nakia, and I have a great divine future prosperity blaster for you this week. Power in action. The task is what it is. The task is what it is. Labeling it as difficult or undesirable only gets in the way of getting it done. See it instead as empowering. See it as the opportunity it is, the opportunity to make a difference to exercise your influence. If you evade, procrastinate, or descend into self-pity, you're mainly hurting yourself. Ooh! Yet you can choose a much more positive path. You have what it takes to do what you must. Put the power of action on your side. Confidence is there waiting for you to claim it. Achievement is in sight, and you can act to make it yours. Right now, you can set in motion the power of your action without hesitation. Go ahead and get it done. No, really, really, go ahead and get it done. So let's create the following categories. Money, (laughs) of course. Relationships, yep, that's not a mistake. And health, a key, key component. Under each category, write three situations where action would make a difference. Under each situation, write the conversations that keep you from acting. 
What conversations can you create that would empower you to act? Suggestions. Hmm, conversations for creativity, forgiveness, possibility, freedom, or hmm, love. Now let's keep a daily log or post daily on Facebook any results or insights. Now, please share this with the Prosperous Divas because we always love to hear your progress. Now, let's look at structures for existence. We have a couple of ways for you to stay in the conversation for living wealthy, future wealth. Being at the finale, which is Living Wealthy, Future Wealth by Design 2018, Session 6 which will be Sunday, January 28th, from 5 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Yes, we acknowledge we are completely out of integrity with time. But the conversation is so empowering, touching, moving, and inspiring. We really want to make sure that you are present and you get all that you can. We want to bring this value to you and really let you have it. So visiting ProsperousDivas.com and receiving our four free four-part series, recognizing winning conversations that no longer work, okay? Visiting us on Facebook and posting facebook.com forward slash Prosperous Divas. Go there, go there, go there. Inquiring minds want to know how to contact the next Lisa Nichols, otherwise known as Janice Hollis, and be in her world. It's a powerful place. Janice? Thank you. Uh, folks can contact me at power, the number four, the word now, dot com. That's power, the number four, now, dot com. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. So, <laughs> if you would like to learn more about Diva Nikki's wealth building programs, visit prosperousdivas.com, future wealth future dash wealth or email her at currency trader at prosperous com. And of course, you know, you can hit me up on at the appointed time. No appointed time for you.com. Cause it's all about you. Tonight's prosperous divas are Janice Hollis, Nikia Franklin, Nikki Taplin and co-leader Ronnie B courtesy of the old grumpy radio network. Please enjoy the performance at the end of the seminar tonight. Prosperous Diva, prosperity is a mindset that can be created by anyone. And, of course, peace, love, and blessings. We're out. Just started a dietary plan, and every day I contemplate how I can satisfy my hunger. I'm seeking more than just a snack. I need more than an appetizer. I don't even think that a three-course meal at a five-star restaurant will do. Don't think they make courses big enough for my type of hunger. Don't think I'll ever get full. Because if I ever get full, that means that I'm not breathing. That means that I'm sedated. That means that I'm unconscious. Because I can never see myself being so full that I don't want to keep going closer and closer to God. I could never hear myself saying I've had enough of his love, and I could never get enough of his forgiveness, and there is no possible way that I would ever stop being hungry for his truth, hungry for his vision, his purpose, and his plan. I could never be too stuffed of his mercy or too full of his presence in my life, and how crazy would I be if I said, no, God, I just can't have any more peace in my life right now. I just don't have enough room for it. I want to overeat when it comes to God. But it really wouldn't be overeat because I'll never get full. I can't get full. My metabolism too high. I have a tapeworm. I need to have meal after meal after meal. I want to digest his will. I want to savor his favor. I crave his direction. I desire his affection, I delight in his protection. I say great over our connection, and I'm starving for his satisfaction. And just to make sure that 
my words line up with my action. I'm giving up my satisfaction like a vegetarian gives up meat. And no longer being content with the content that I used to habitually eat. I don't care for Twitter, but my dietary plan is something I would tweet. Tweet because I'm so excited that being hungry is what I'm doing right now. And my hunger is getting me closer to making it possible for God and I to meet. Because at the end of my dietary plan, the goal is to be invited to kneel at God's feet.